I don't want to be called an actor. I don't want to be called a star. I don't want to have a label. I want to have a legacy. I want to be known as someone who has goals and achieves them, and whatever they might be, wherever they might be. I want to be limitless. I, I want to break stereotypes. I want to go where no man or woman has gone before. And it might be a scary path, and it might be a path that no one's taken, but at least it'll be just mine. I had the worst self-esteem when I was a kid. I was made fun of because of the way I talked, because of where I came from. I was made fun of on every level. And the only way you can change that is setting goals for yourself and saying, I will be the best version of me. When I was 18 and I started doing movies, I gave myself a year and a half. And I said, if I don't, if I sense that I'm not good at what I'm doing and I don't see something opening up for me, I'm gonna go back to college. I always had a plan B. I still always have a plan B. And that's what I always tell young people. That, you know, life doesn't end. It, it just keeps moving. You have to put your blinkers on and find what you do best and just keep moving. There was a film I did called Fashion very early in my career. That kind of changed me a little bit, that movie. It was at a time where female-led films weren't given as much importance as the boys' movies were, because boys' movies make more money. Meghna, you're next. Come on, come on. But that movie did really, really well. Everyone was like, whoa, a female-led movie did well, and it made a lot of money, and it changed me as an actor, because I was like, wait a minute, I can create people. I taught myself makeup, I taught myself clothes, I taught myself emotions, I taught myself to move people. That's a huge, huge power. My name is Alex Parrish. Protecting our country had always been my dream. Want to go was my first audition. I knew I had to go into this room and read these lines in front of all these people, but I was so nervous before I went in. So I went to the bathroom, I remember, before I went in, and I looked in the mirror, and it's so stupid and cliche. <laughs> but I, I talked to myself, and I said, what's wrong with you? You've played the most difficult characters in, in, in the most complicated movies. I tossed my hair a little bit, felt great, and walked out. <laughs> Did my bit, and got the job. <laughs> The bomber knew exactly what they were doing from day one. Why do you say that? They framed the brown girl. In this country, I'm an easy person to blame. So I remember when I read the line, I remember calling the writers and I said, this is a really big deal for people in general, people who look like me, people, you know, who have been treated a certain way um, or racially profiled because of the color of their skin. And thank you for giving me that line. When was the last time you saw an FBI agent with a hijab, you know? When was the last time you saw an Indian girl who is the headline of a show and at the same time completely, insanely unapologetic? Nice to meet you, Ryan Booth. And bold and brazen and not a doctor or a nerd or a computer scientist or, you know, Apu from The Simpsons who talks like that. When I was very young, I was 19 and I was doing first few movies, I remember that the producer just said, well, she can't work it out, it's fine, we'll just cast someone else. Girls are replaceable. Subconsciously, it really worked on my mind. And I started picking up parts which were strong, which were not just the damsel in distress waiting for someone to rescue me. Now, 13, 15 years later, the movies that I do, I'm irreplaceable. <laughs>